This is your evening news update for Tuesday, December 21. We're so glad you could join us. We begin with news from the law courts. A murder charge no longer hangs over the head of police officer Everton Gittins. Gittins was today cleared of taking the life of Selwyn Blues Knight on March 15, 2015 and placing the deceased son, Junior Knight, in danger of death or serious bodily harm. The decision was handed down by Magistrate Christy Coffey Sargent, who said the prosecution had failed to make out a prima facie case in relation to any of the matters. She then instructed Gittins that he was free to go. This evening, MP for St. Michael Central and noted attorney at law Arthur Holder visited Knight's widow Marlene to explain the developments. He spoke to reporters after the visit. I sought to offer my sympathies, etc., and to explain to her, do not let her get her down, that there's a process of law that has to be that can be undertaken. That ought, that if it is so desired to be undertaken, but it is out of the of her hands. And that is left the authorities. Still no settlement on going strike action involving some of the island's nurses. Minister of Health and Wellness Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick today expressed a willingness to meet with the nurses to end nearly three weeks of industrial action. But he hints that the nurses led by the Unity Workers Union must return to work to allow for the discussions in keeping with acceptable procedures. At the same time, UWU General Secretary Senator Caswell Franklin served notice that his members will remain on strike until the government and the union sit down and come to some form of agreement. In other news this Tuesday, the Salvation Army distributed some 350 meals today at its annual Christmas luncheon for the less fortunate. Divisional Business Manager of the Salvation Army, Sherma Evelyn, praised the generosity of corporate Barbados, especially Cherish Cosmetics, for donating the supplies to prepare the meals. She told reporters that the Army was also well on the way to meeting this year's target of raising $700,000. Right now, we are $424,000. And as you can see, the donations are still coming. And we believe that, again, we will meet the target of 700000 Evelyn added that the much-needed funds will allow the charity to continue to assist the vulnerable. We have this program going on. And as I said, during the year, we have our pantry program. So even when this is finished, that money will help supply um, groceries for the pantry program, where we are able to give out to persons. You know, they don't necessarily want to come to the center for a meal, but they're able to cook a meal for their family. So we give them a um, certain amount of groceries to last them a month, and then they will return a month later to get another set. And people do come off the program. And we have had a number of persons who weren't working, but now with the uh, tourism opening back, they've gone back to work, so they have come off the program. Uh, but for Christmas, we still give them. Um, but they come off the program because they're back to work. In today's COVID-19 update, a total of 66 new cases, 30 males and 36 females, were identified by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Monday from 1,058 tests conducted. Of these, five persons are under the age of 18, while 60 are 18 years and older. The age of one person is unknown. There were 155 people in isolation facilities, while 979 were in home isolation. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 142,281. That's 52.5% of the total population, or 62.3% of the eligible population. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Christian Paul. I'm the country manager of BCIC here in Barbados. When the COVID vaccine first came out, I thought it was an interesting and a potentially successful way for us to navigate our way out of the pandemic and a return to some state of normalcy. I took the vaccine because I have a young family. I want to make sure that they are safe and protected. I have friends, extended family, and obviously I work here with colleagues, so I thought it was a good way to protect, to help protect them and to keep them safe, as well as myself. I would encourage others to take the vaccine because I know that you can still transmit the disease even if you're vaccinated, but the chances of being severely ill or worse dying are significantly reduced. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. On the regional scene, Antiguan authorities served notice they will be doubling down on making sure citizens adhere to the country's protocols, with a state of emergency soon to be lifted. 
and the threat of the Omicron variant. ABS News has the story. As curfew hours are removed later this week, bars and clubs will be expecting bumper crowds. Cabinet, however, has set an upper limit of patrons at 150. Deputy Commissioner of Police Everton Jeffers says the Royal Police Force will be extremely visible this season. When we come, we will not just look, we will be going in. We will be doing spot checks. Persons will have to show their cards. So those persons who might have gotten in without a card, you might be one of those persons we ask to provide your card. According to Jeffers, this should not be perceived as a target on any operator or establishment. We are not in the business of targeting people. Uh, there are times when we would get tips in terms of uh, a particular business with lots of people there. And at other times during our patrols, we will observe. Because sometimes you don't necessarily need to see people. You see cars. Chief Health Inspector Sharon Martin posits her department will be better staffed in the coming days and will join the police officers in ensuring compliance. We plan to work along with the police officers when we are going out there to help us with enforcement. Cabinet has promised me, promised to give me 10 additional workers to assist in carrying out the surveillance. On the international scene, U.S. President Joe Biden announced the opening of more federal vaccination and testing sites to tackle a surge in COVID-19 cases sparked by the Omicron variant. He also disclosed that some 500 million at-home rapid tests will be available to Americans for free starting in January. The U.S. President has urged all Americans to be vaccinated and get booster shots. He encouraged people to take precautions during holiday celebrations. Take a listen. All these people who have not been vaccinated, you have an obligation to yourselves, to your families, and quite frankly, I know I get criticized for this, to your country. Get vaccinated now. It's free. It's convenient. I promise you it saves lives. And I honest to God believe it's your patriotic duty. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.